sunny morning at Hockenheim as we get set for qualifying for Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS Endurance Cup. It's the first time the championship has been here. New experience for me, new challenge for me. It's the first time for me in GT World Challenge Endurance. We are well prepared and uh, looking forward to the weekend. Jack Aitken doing great things and he's pressing on again. Well, he's up towards the timing line and breaks the beam, goes through 37.9, could effort that. Remember, he's only three tenths down on the pole position time. The team is doing an amazing job, better than ever. I think we are more pack all together because at the end we go all together in one direction. I stay very positive. Albert Colston, now this is car is third in Q2 and it's third on aggregate as well. So for sure our expectations are quite high, we have the potential for sure, we are doing a great job uh, up to now, we just have to, to keep focus. We are about to go racing at Hockenheim then, the first time the Endurance Cup has been here, welcome everybody to a sunny Germany. Got the second row, Jack Aitken and Matthew Drudy. Go, lights go green. Good start by Weird. Good start as well, though, by Rivera in the Ferrari. Game third is Jack Aitken. The drama there Ooh. off the road, spectacular. They go for Bell in the McLaren. And that's Arthur Rouget into the pit lane. And I would propose that he got involved with Rob Bell because he's damaged the bodywork and he needs a new tyre. Race director straight away calls for the safety car. This fourth round of Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe Endurance Cup is ready to go. We go racing again. <laughs> Look at Aiken. Wow, the yeah. body language of that Lamborghini. And there, Jack Aiken thinks about a move on the inside line, commits to a move on the inside line, goes through on the inside line. Great stuff. Yeah, it was uh, quite a mess at the start. Uh, I was behind the McLaren for a long time, but uh, I managed to pass him and then we started to have a, a tyre failure. That Lamborghini's dropping down the order now, so it's fallen to the back of the queue. Unfortunately, it's lost out now. Stuart White, though, packed it to him because this is undeniably the best that we have seen out of him. <laughs> he's risen to the occasion. He's done a really, really good job. And now, as I say, Mick Vishofer has got to carry on the good work. And I'm telling you, somebody else is on addition to that's Mirko Bortolotti. He's in 10th place now, and he's caught up to Vishofer. Mirko Bortolotti takes the fastest lap of the race. Mick Vishofer, uh, he will carry on the good work of Constant Apolline and Anne Stuart White and bring home that car as a winner. It is a silver win, and it's a first win for Constant Apolline and for Mick Vishofer and for Stuart White. The Lamborghini was performing so, so well all race. Um, just to win the Silver Cup and be so competitive overall is what we dreamt about and been working for all season. Yeah, we could finish two cars in top 10, P6, 7 and P14 then with the car number 19. And it's, I think, a good preparation as well for, for Dardoch and uh, hopefully there at the end with all three cars success.